we are told that we have points A, B, and C. A is at 1, 0, so that it's on the x-axis. And then the point B is on the unit circle. So it's on this circle, the radius of which is 1. And because the radius of the circle is 1, it passes through the point A. So point A is on the unit circle. And B is also on the unit circle. And B is determined such that if you draw the radius from the center to B, that central angle must be some angle theta. Okay, So that's how B is determined. And then we are also told that theta must be greater than zero and less than pi, which means that the point B could only be between this point and this point on the unit circle. So it's along here. It's only on this upper half of the unit circle. So that's point B. Then there's another point C. And we are told that point C is such that it makes a central angle that is 2 pi, OK? So that's what this means. So remember that cosine theta, sine theta, that is the coordinate in the on the points of the unit circle, OK? So every point here can be expressed as sine theta or cosine theta, sine theta, and where theta is the central angle. So now we have these three points, A, B, and C. And we know that C is 2 theta, so that means the angle here up to B is theta. And so the angle from B, from this from this ray to B, going to C must also be theta. So that the total central angle is 2 theta. So now we have this, these three points, and we can now draw that triangle. Now the problem asks us, to find the area of this triangle ABC. Okay, so that's the first part in the problem. The second part is asking us to find the maximum value of that area because that area is in terms of theta, right? If you change theta, you will change the area. So the second part of the problem asks us what is the maximum value of that area? And finally, we are also asked, what is the value of theta that gives us the maximum area? Okay, So we need to look for the general expression of the area. We need to look for the maximum value of the area. And we also need to look for the value of the angle, the central angle for B, such that the area is maximum. Okay, So how do we do, how do, we do this? First, we will look at the triangle and find some special properties. And it's probably going to help us simplify the area. And we do step one so that we can compute the area in terms of theta. And when we have that area in terms of theta, we can find the maximum value of the area and also find the corresponding theta using calculus. Okay. So let's look at the triangle again. Now, right off the bat, we notice that if we draw this radius from the center to B, this radius is the same as the radius from center to C and center to A, right? Well, of course, they're all on the unit circle. So this one is congruent to this one and congruent to this one. We also notice that we already mentioned this earlier, the angle here, the central angle to B is theta. And that also means that the central angle or the angle from B, from this rate from B to C is also theta because C has to be cosine theta. That means cosine theta sine theta. That means the central angle must be two theta. So we can conclude that this part here is just theta. So that when you add this angle theta and this angle theta, you get two theta, okay? So now we have established that this side is congruent to this side and this side, and this side or this angle is congruent to this angle. That means we have an SA 
S congruence, okay? So AOB, so if we mark this with O, the origin is O. So AOB, that triangle, is congruent to BOC, okay? That triangle. And that is by SAS congruence, side angle side congruence. And we can also now know the angle here for A. Sorry, for AOC. That's the measure of that angle from A or AOC is just 2 pi, which is the entire circle, 2 pi minus whatever the angle here, which is 2 theta. Okay, so we know these facts now. And these are actually quite handy for finding the area. Because first, we can see that the area of A of AOB plus the area of BOC plus the area of AOC, if you add them all together, you're going to get the area of the total big or the total area of the big triangle. So now we write that but we also know that the area that the area of aob is equal to the area of boc well because they are congruent so we can just replace this with one expression and let's choose aob and then you just add them together you get two of them right you just do twice aob plus whatever the area of aoc is now we know that this will be our expression for the for the area of the entire triangle. Now, let's look at that a bit closer. The area of any triangle, so let's remember the area of any triangle, if you have the side angle in the side, SAS, it's easy to find the area of that triangle. That is from trigonometry or geometry, we know that that is one half times the side times the other side times the sine of the angle in between them, the sine of the included angle. So that's one half side side sine of the included angle. And that's very convenient because we know the side, side, and angle here. So we can actually do that. So we will now know the area of AOB. So that's two from here, two, then one half. What is the side of AOB? Well, that's just one because it's a unit circle. So one, the second side is also one. And now we have the sign of the included angle. The included angle is just theta here, right? This is one, one, then theta, right? S-A-S. -S. So we have this expression. Now for the area of AOC, this triangle here, we use the same thing. We have one half, right, from here. The side is one, the other side is one. So one and one. Then the included angle here, we just said it's 2 pi minus 2 theta. So sine of 2 pi minus 2 theta. Now, this is the expression for our area. So we just have to simplify that a little bit so it looks a little bit better. Okay, so we copy it here. This is from the previous slide. Now we just simplify S of theta. So the twos cancel and we are left with just sine theta in here and the one half here remains, but remember, we have two pi here. So whatever multiple of two pi you add, it should not matter for sine and cosine, right? So we can just get rid of that, of that two pi, and we're still going to get the same value, right? So we can just get rid of that, and we get negative two pi, or rather negative two theta in here. And now it's negative, so we can put that out of the sine function, and we just get this expression for the area of that entire triangle. Now, this is the answer for the first part of the problem. We now need to find the value of theta that makes this maximum and also the maximum value of this. So to do that, we're gonna use calculus. First, we remember that to find the maximum, first is we just, so in this case, to be precise, we actually have to look at the endpoints as well. But um, we are told that that we have open, we have open, we have an open interval. That means zero is less than zero is less than theta is less than pi. So we really can't look at 
any endpoints here because they're not included. So we only have a local maximum or minimum. That means we only need to find the derivative or the point where the derivative is zero. So where it is zero, we have either a maximum or a minimum. In this case, we're looking for a maximum. So first step, we find the derivative of this and set that equal to zero. So zero equals the derivative of sine of of s of theta. And the derivative of that is simply the derivative of this, which is cosine theta. Derivative of this is cosine two theta. Now, we can use some identities to expand this into this one, right? And the reason why we do that is because we want to be able to do some algebra and that means we need to have like terms. So here we cannot do algebra because it's cosine theta and cosine two theta. But now here, if you do, if you use the identities to make it like this, we can now do some algebra on cosine theta and cosine squared theta. Now that we have this, we can just rearrange that, then factor that, and we actually get this expression, which is easy, right? This is just algebra. We just set each each factor to zero to get the answer. So let's do that here. Two cosine of theta plus one is zero. And the other answer is zero equals cosine of theta minus one, which means the for the first one, we get cosine of theta equals negative one half. The other is cosine of theta equals one. For this case, we know that the theta here, so the theta, so let, let me erase that. That's not cosine of theta anymore, that's theta is two pi over three, okay? That's the theta for this one. And the other one is zero, right? Theta is zero, that's when you get one. But we do not include this in our solution because we are told that theta must lie between zero and pi, okay? So it must not include zero or pi. So we are sure now that two pi over three, theta, when theta is two pi over three, that is when we have the maximum or the minimum area, right? So it's easy to verify now the area when this theta is two pi over three. So again, let me just erase that here, okay? So S of two pi over three, so we just replace we just replace this one here with two pi over three. And you get sine of two pi over three minus one half sine of four pi over three. And you're gonna get this value here. Now, how do we know this is the maximum? Well, strictly speaking, we, we have to check, right? For, for, other, for other parts here. For example, one thing we can do is just pick out a number that is not two pi over three so mm, let's do that. Let's do pi over three. Let's do pi over three. So let's do pi over three. And then you plug it in here and see if you get a number that is less than this. This, If that number is less than this, then this must be a maximum. There's no other possible explanation. So I, I'm going to let you do that. And, and I'm gonna let you find out that in fact, this is the maximum. So this is our answer, yeah? And yeah, ju just try pi over three in here and you're gonna see that that's less than this.